Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're now head heading to our second big conversation this morning. And uh, over the weekend, on Easter Sunday, April 4th, former Nigerian President Olusegun Obasanjo and a prominent religious leader, Sheikh Gumi, met in Abekuta to discuss security situations in Nigeria and prefer solutions out of them. And to discuss this, we've invited Mr. Jiti Ogunye, political analyst. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for inviting me. Yes. During this meeting, Obasanjo and uh, Sheikh Gumi, you know, raised a 21 points communique and, you know, they preferred solutions to the insecurity challenges in Nigeria, in addition to, you know, asking the federal government or making a recommendation to set up special courts to try bandits. But we, we spoke to analysts this morning who said just setting up special courts would not address the problem of insecurity in Nigeria. Uh, let's get what you think about this particular recommendation. First, we need at this time to look at uh, the messengers, not just the message. And the medium they've chosen to convey their message to the Nigerian people and the government. My understanding is that what you do did was to make a recommendation to the federal government on the way forward as far as uh, how to deal with uh, bandits uh, in the country is concerned. So if we look at the do, the critical question we must ask is that why are they making this recommendation? What's their motive? Is it pure, noble, and constructive? My view is that it is not. In particular, because of the role that has been played by Sheikh Gumi. I don't see Sheikh Gumi as a good faith recommender. The way he's been willing and dealing with bandits makes his suggestion and recommendation suspicious at this time. And I think that our intelligence services community to really be gathering intelligence on what the motives and actions of uh, Shigumi, you know, are. You know, really, and I, I don't see him as a good fit uh, recommender, you know, making this uh, suggestion. That's number one. Number two is that for the president, uh, former president of the country, look, there is a council of state that is established by the constitution who is an advisory body. Even if the president of the country does not call on him to give suggestions, I know that he's been battered in the past for perpetually writing letters and all that, he could generate a memo on his concern, circulate it amongst the former head of state in the country and call for a council of state meeting to discuss the dire security situations of Nigeria. This side you know, recommendation that is turned into uh, a media celebration is not the way to go if you ask me. And now, number three, what is even the substance of the recommendation? That bandits be appeased and told not to do what they are doing anymore, so they should be resettled and they should be uh, accommodated if they are willing to surrender. Resettled where? So when you are talking about resettlement, no rehabilitation. Look at the exact word, resettlement, no rehabilitation. Well, they, they've also if spoken these about... these persons are not Nigerians, do they have a right to be resettled in Nigeria? Uh, Mr. Right, Mr. Ogunye, um, sorry. Mr. Ogunye, they, they've also spoken about special courts for bandits and kidnappers. Uh, do you think that maybe, you know, that might be a, a, a quick answer also? The what? They've also, or they also mentioned the setting up of special courts uh, to address banditry and kidnapping. How many special courts are, will you be setting up? It's been suggested in the past by no other person than uh, uh, less than the attorney general of the country that you set up a sexual offenses court. 
So anti-robbery squad, uh, anti-kidnapping squad, anti-pipeline vandalization court. Are we serious as a people? You think that you set up court at the drop of the hat? If you have a court that has a criminal jurisdiction designated by the court, by case assignment, can you get those courts to take the cases? In Lagos here and elsewhere, there are certain courts in lieu of the establishment of the anti-corruption court that we call for in this country. There were certain courts that were designated by the heads of courts as courts that were taking the EFCC cases. Justice Olubu Noyewale was one of them before I went to the Court of Appeal in Lagos here. And that was how the Brazilian uh, bank uh, fraud case was cracked in this Lagos. So you can designate certain courts in the existing court system as courts that will take these cases. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You don't need to be creating courts anyhow now. These people that are making this suggestion, do they know what they are talking about? We do respect to them. Right. Is that how to govern the country? So, anti kidnapping is right, set up a court. Ritual uh, killings is right, set up a court. Ritual killing. Yahoo Yahoo is right, set up a court for Yahoo Yahoo. Set up a court on anything. So, at the end of the day, you then have thematic courts. Is that how you operate the criminal justice system of a country? So, if we have a problem with our judiciary in terms of delay, in terms of is dilatory procedure in terms of uh, prosecutorial uh, problems, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, not only that, in terms of the executive even faithfully implementing judgments of courts. Because you think that it's the problem of the judiciary alone. No. In this country, our laws provide still for the death penalty. So, our judges are made to pass death sentences. No state governors want to sign execution warrant because they think that there will be blood in their hands. Yet they are stealing and robbing the country blind every day and thereby making our people to suffer and some of them to die because they are being killed by preventable diseases. Roads are bad and all that. Their welfare is not being taken care of. So, indirectly, they are killing our people. Indirectly, blood are in their hands. But they don't want to sign execution warrant. Yet they have not amended a criminal law to delete the death penalty as a punishment. Is that a faithful execution of the laws? When a governor swear an oath every time I shall faithfully discharge the function of my office, I shall execute all the laws of the country. They don't do their own bit. So I am telling you that. And indeed, this is what also encourages, in a way, extrajudicial killings by the police. We can blame police all we want, but the truth of the matter is that when they arrest some of the people with guns, armed robbers, kidnappers, and all that, they know that down the line, the criminal justice system will not be faithfully operated to ensure that the sanctions that are provided by the law are applied. Okay. So they take the law into their hands. And they kill them Mr. Ogoye, because they know that down the night they will release them anyway. Mr. They will not kill them. Mr. Ogoye, we've heard what you think about you know this point in the communique about the setting up of special courts and all the holes that are possibly in this recommendation. But let's look at the thirteenth point of their communique. And former President Olusegun Obasanjo and Shegumi here recommended that Nigeria as a country have a common policy on dealing with terrorists. And they say that we should stop having situations where one state will pay ransom to bandits and another state will say they would never pay ransom. And one state would negotiate with bandits, another state would say they would not. You know, where we have different, you know, different responses to banditry in Nigeria. Do, do you also have, uh, uh, you know, opposing thoughts to that particular recommendation? Or do you see a common policy on insecurity as something that we should adopt in the country? That's the point I'm making. I'm saying that Kumi in particular does not have the integrity to make this recommendation. Who is it to be making such recommendation? I consider he has the right to freedom of speech. 
But I warn that the media should not be too eager to lap up everything that these people say. Was he not the one encouraging the payment of ransom? Talking about settlement, talking about talking to them, talking about you know, accommodating them, saying that they were offended, saying that they have been left in the lodge. So why are they not making recommendations for armed robbers? Or issue uh, you know, murderers? Um, so, Mr. Ogunye, so, uh, if you look away from the messenger, if you look away from, you know, maybe the antecedents of the people making these recommendations, do you see any merits at all to the suggestion? Listen, listen. Please, please. Look. The devil cannot be suggesting peace to me. When the devil does that, I must make an inquiry as to what the intent of the devil is. We are in the period of Easter now. Satan was said to have approached Jesus and told him, jump. Are you, are you referring that Sheikh Gumi here would be, you know, the devil in your, in your statement? You are the one suggesting that. <laughs> I just, I'm just making an analogy. But you, Satan you said, just, you just, it, it's your going. words I'm <laughs> quoting back to that you, sir. I will tempt the Lord thy God. I won't jump. So I'm <laughs> telling you that Sheikh Gumi, okay, let, 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 let me just dilate here a little. Look, part of the problem that we have here, and Nigeria must pay attention, part of the problem that we have here, in the North particularly, about banditry, is that banditry that we are dealing with in the North that's manifested in Boko Haram, because they are linked. Rufai, the governor of Kaduna State, are just alleged two days ago so, that ransom that are paid are funneled into Boko Haram war. So there is a link. So the Chilkumi that we are talking about must be dissected. All Look, right. the banditry we are talking about in the North has a religious dimension. Yeah, and, and that's, that's, that's where I'm going are not into. just fighting a war. Yeah, that's, that's, that's where I'm about to go into. Mr. Ogunye, I want, you know, now you've spoken about the um, religious, you know, aspect of it. Um, in the recommendations, the number 10 there it says, and that is with regards to the role that Nigerians should play. It says that all well-meaning Nigerians should be involved in finding solutions by desisting from blame game, desisting from ethnicizing these crimes, desisting from regionalizing uh, these crimes also. Do you think that is possible, that we can take away ethnicity and religion um, uh, from, you know, this conversation? Look, maybe these people are just pretending to be statement, and then they are making this recommendation. So when you want to deal with Boko Haram, are you going to deny the fact that it's basically canary driven in terms of those who are fighting this war? And it is in that area. And it is in that area they are claiming that they want to forge a theocratic Islamic state. That's a re reality you have to deal with. So if you are espousing that fact, how does that make you somebody that is giving a religious twist to the argument or ethnicizing it or regionalizing it? So, so, so that's why I'm saying that, look, when, when a problem hits a country like this. People that should not even make suggestion on the way forward. It is the brightness of the day that brings forth the other. I'm telling you, Phil Kumi should go and you know deal with a religious issue that he's dealing with and then teach his adherents on how to be tolerant. That's part of the problem that we are dealing with. Mr. Ogunye, you, you, you seem to be, you know, ignoring that Obasanjo also made contributions to this. You know, I, I don't know if that might in any way influence your, your comments because Olush Chief, Olushago Obasanjo and Sheikh Gumi came together to make the suggestion. So it wasn't entirely Sheikh Gumi who wrote this and, and sent it off to the press. Look, one so does, does, does Obasanjo have any merits with you at all? One needed the other. Obasanjo, former president Obasanjo, 
had not been involved in recent times in this boundary issue. Shegumi has been in the news, going to the bush, negotiating with everybody, you know, moving in and out with ease, unscathed. So, Obasanjo needed him for validation. And Shegumi needed Obasanjo for validation. It's a case of mutual need. That's the point I'm making. I, I'm not saying that the, there is no problem here. I'm not saying that if you look at their 10 point uh, demand or suggestion, you can't look at it as okay. Yes, for example, um, the suggestion that uh, we should have a uniform way of dealing with with, with uh, bandits. One state shouldn't be offering ransom, another state not offering ransom. That's good. Indeed, the Sultan of Sokoto earlier had warned the Nigerian military that he was a colonel in the army, that when an enemy combatant takes guns against you, save capture, you destroy him. That this whole idea of Buratai talking about, you know, rehabilitating a uh, bandit, uh, rehabilitating uh, Boko Haram warriors, was wrong-headed. He said it publicly. Okay? So, I agree that there is a need to have, you know, equal treatment and all that. But I am saying on this occasion, the good suggestion this duo may make, in my view, all right. is overshadowed by their post story, by their, by their antecedents, by their current disposition on the same subject, particularly here in Gumi. That's the point I'm making. All right. Um, hopefully, you know, if it, if it came from, um, you know, totally different persons, uh, you know, we might be, you know, we might see things different, you know, or, or is, that, is that possible? Do you think that if this message came from entirely different personalities, um, it might have had a different um, uh, feel. Possibly, possibly, but right. but yes, possibly, possibly. If 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 uh, other persons are the one making this suggestion, my disposition will be different. And really, this is an indictment on the government. You know, when people talk about government, people don't understand it very well. By the uh, doctrine of social contract. The people were supposed to have gathered and surrender their collective wish to serve government, to the government, to govern them. So the government must lead. The government must not be led. So if the government is leading, all these suggestions will not be necessary. Sheokumi will not be relevant. And Obasanjo's position will not be relevant because the government will have moved ahead. Some of these suggestions that they made that you are now calling me this morning to come and be discussing as something of value, government will have been dealing with that. All right. But what we see in Kassidan State, you see people dealing with uh, bandits, taking guns from them. In some State, you see them uh, saying that they are going to give them cows. Okay, and, going uh, and, 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 uh, uh, he lost vehicles. All right, we, we we have to round up here, um, but of course uh, you've you've you know shared your thoughts uh, very very well on uh, this conversation this morning, and uh, we hope that we can of course uh, bring you back again um, as, as soon as possible. Um, if there's all the developments from this uh, conversation, thank you very much for joining us and for speaking with us this morning. Thanks again, Mr. Omiye. Yeah, yeah, thank you. All right, and that's where we say goodbye here this morning on The Breakfast. It's been a very interesting Monday morning from speaking with the president of the National Association of Resident Doctors and now, of course, to GT Ogunye with regards uh, security, banditry, kidnapping and, and the likes. Thank you very much for starting up your week with us. If you missed out on any of this, get on our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Yes, thanks again. I am Annetta Felix. And I am Osao Gye See you tomorrow.